Here I'm going to show you a very easy and a nice way to take your raw, boring data from this to this to make it visually easy to filter it so you could do something like, say, go to the Midtown store for 2020 and you want to look at the sales for the Thursdays in that year. And to do this, we're going to be using a table along with the slicer feature and an additional really cool thing that I'm going to show you, which is probably the most important part of this tutorial that will allow us to go from the store ID numbers over here. You may notice there are no names to names that are easy for us to use and understand as well with the dates to go from a basic date right here to breaking it out for the weekdays, months, and years. So it's very visually easy to just click a button and have it filter it. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right. Now, two things to mention up front. I will not be using pivot tables. They are very useful and very amazing, but sometimes you don't want to use them, and we're not going to be using them here, just tables and slicers. And I am not going to be using the timeline, because those only work with pivot tables. And also, I find them to be not terrifically visually intuitive. I think it's much easier to go through dates using this sort of setup right here. But now let's go with the raw data, and let me show you how to make this lovely little setup. First things first, select all of the data and pull it down, let's say row 10. And while we have the data selected, go ahead and go to insert table or control T to make it a table. My table has headers. Always a good idea to have headers on your data. These are the headers here, ID, basket, ID, item, ID, and so on. Makes life much easier. Now the next thing, let's just add a little bit of formatting because in this example, the raw data is not going to be hidden from the user. We want them to be able to see it and sift through it. So we're going to go ahead and add percentages here. And let's give it some decimal places. For the price, we are going to make it like that and total the same. And for the date, let us go ahead. Some of these have times. That's why they look funny. Currently, they are formatted as general. Let's go ahead and just make them a date format, short date. And now we are rocking and rolling. Things are starting to look good. But where do I get the cool slicers? And then where do I get the information about the stores, for instance? Well, here I just have store ID numbers. And if you export data from a system, that's most likely how it might spit them out but maybe you want to represent the stores by their addresses or some other nickname like I have over here, Downtown, Midtown, Mountain, and Wholesale. Well, to do that, all we are going to do is to go over here and create a little VLOOKUP table. So just say store ID here and store name here. And here we will only have four of them. So one, two, three, four, and then put the names for them downtown, mountain, midtown, and a wholesale location. And let's go ahead and make this a table, control T, headers, yes. It'll make it easier to reference it. And now let's just go to the right and type store name. Hit enter, our table will expand, and we will be moving this guy out of the way shortly. But now all we do is equals the lookup, lookup value, table array, column index number two, range lookup false for exact match, hit enter. And now we have names for all of our store IDs. And what I just showed you there is the premise for making your raw data significantly more useful, the helper column. You are going to add as many helper columns as you need to make your life easier so that we can then sort and filter off of these helper columns. And so if I go over here to the final tab, you may notice that it goes H-I-J-K-S. We have some sneaky hidden columns right there. That's where I've put all of the helper columns for this guy. And if I now go to unhide these columns, Look at all the extra data there. So that is the sneaky little trick 
to make your worksheets look nice but powerful at the same time. The helper columns add the power, hiding them makes it look nice in addition with the slicers. So let's go ahead and finish out these helper columns and let's move this guy out of the way. You don't have to make this a table by the way and you could put this on a completely separate worksheet. It's not a problem at all. I'm just keeping everything on one worksheet to make it a little bit easier to follow. So now actually before we add the next helper column, let's go ahead and add the slicer because it's such a cool feature. It's so simple. It basically just makes it so that if I want to filter this data, I don't have to click the drop down arrow and go through here. All you have to do, click in the table, go to insert and slicer. And here we have all of the header names for the columns. Once again, that's why they are so helpful and important. Now, what would we like to filter by? You can actually choose as many as you want. So let me choose a few here. Let's say store name and total, just random things right now. How about category? That's probably a good one. And each one of these that you select will be a new individual slicer. So now I have four slicers here and I can arrange them and move them around and place them on the spreadsheet however I would like. And the point of the slicer is not to add any additional functionality to the spreadsheet. It's to make it easier to access that functionality, so easier to filter. And though I'm not covering pivot tables here, sort of the next step after this tutorial is to use slicers in combination with pivot tables, and they are really cool when you do that. They do the same basic thing, but you can apply them to multiple pivot tables all at the same time. Anyway, that's getting beyond this tutorial. So let me go ahead and just remove the ones that we don't want to use here. Let's go ahead and remove category, price, and total. So you just click them and hit delete. Here I want to focus on dates and the store names. Here we have the store names. They are really easy to control, these little slicers. All you have to do is click them and you can resize them like this. And go up to the slicer tab over here once you've clicked it and really helpful. It's so easy to forget this. If you want to make these guys smaller, what you do is you go over here to the columns section and you add columns to the little slicer. So now I have two columns, three, four, and then just resize the slicer to fit all of it on the screen. Let's back it up there and leave it at two columns. So it looks pretty decent. All right, a little bit bigger. And what you can do here now, just click one of these and it will filter the entire data table. It is as easy as that. Click this button to clear the filter. And if you're clicking around and you realize you want to select more than one store, just click this little multi-select guy right here. And then you can go ahead and click as many options as you want. You can also get to that just by hitting control on the keyboard. So you don't have to have that selected. We could click one, then control, and do another one. So it's a really cool little feature. Now let's go ahead and add the helper columns for the dates. So we want to do one for the weekday. And all we're going to be doing here is using some formulas to get a weekday from our date. So make sure that your date is a real date. And we're going to cheat a little bit, so we're not going to actually extract anything for this example. We're just going to format it a bit different using the text function. It's a really helpful little function, definitely underutilized. So equals text, select the cell, comma, and how do we want to format it? For the weekday, just within quotation marks, you can do DD, DD, and I believe when we hit enter, we will get the weekday. Perfect. So now we can go to our slicer, insert, slicer, we have a weekday, okay. Now we can sort our data nice and neat by the days of the weeks. Check out the sales for Tuesday between all of our stores, or Thursday, or Monday. And then you can go down here as well and just sort by the downtown location on Monday. So just by adding that helper column, we have made it so easy to choose the days of the week. And that adds so much power to your raw data right there just from that single helper column. Let's get it out of the way clear our filters and add a couple more. So we want to add one for the month and we will use equals text again for that value, the date and format text MM, MM, enter. There we go. 
the year is very easy. We just use the year function equals year, select the date, enter, and there we go. So we now have four helper columns. Let us add the rest of our slicers. Insert, slicer, year, month. We have weekday and store name. All right. Now let us continue to add a little bit of formatting to these guys just to make it a little bit easier to fit on here and look a little bit better. So for the year, I'm going to go ahead and remove the top bar right here. So just right click and go to slicer settings. It's off the screen right now, but if you go to the slicer tab, you can get to slicer settings right here as well. And then right here under header, just uncheck display header. Hit OK. And we have just the options by which we would like to filter. Now let's go ahead and make it two columns. And now we've got a nice, neat, small little filter. 2021 or 2020. Hit Control to select both. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and finish up these guys for the month. We will give them three columns. And for the weekday, we shall do the same thing. Three. Make it a little bit bigger. And one really cool thing that we can do right now to organize these, make it easier to do this, is on the slicer tab under Align, click Snap to Grid or Snap to Shape. But for the very first shape, you should probably not have any one of these selected. And let's just get the upper left guy positioned how we want. And maybe let's put some text up here and make it a little bit bigger and move the slicers down. All right, slicer. We can make it a little bigger, move it over. All right, now go back to slicer, align, snap to shape. And very easy to align everything. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. And once it's lined up correctly, go ahead and uncheck them so you can resize them easily. And make sure they fit. And then turn it back on. Snap to shape. Now, this is tedious. It takes a lot more time than you want it to take this little last bit. But it really does help when you are finishing up your spreadsheet. And we can now go ahead and hide all of this data. Select the columns. Right click hide, go over here, view, grid lines, maybe we can also take away headings and a formula bar. Zoom in a little bit, and you could make it so it fit a little bit better as well if you want to make it bigger. And you've now got a pretty decent looking little table, and it's easy to read, understand, and filter through all of the values. So what you've learned here is that tables are great. Slicers are really great. Helper columns are amazing. Now I've mentioned pivot tables a couple times here, and even when you go to pivot tables, you will still find that helper columns and creating them at this stage of the process here will still help you tremendously when you get to pivot tables as well. So the number one thing that I want you to get out of this tutorial is just how amazing helper columns are. And you can have as many of them as you need to. You do not need to make crazy formulas and functions that are very difficult for you to follow and maintain and understand in the future. You can make many, many helper columns and have them build off of one another. And then when you're done, just hide them. And then you've got a very powerfully filtered and sorted data set using nice visual slicers like this. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.